In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how many minutes it takes to format your ebook and print books in Vellum. You've probably heard about how easy it is, but it's, it's easier to just believe it when you see it. And so I'm going to show you how to import your novel file, how to add in front and back matter, and to add images in different places. Before we start, just a few words on my process because everybody else has their own. I do all of my writing in Scrivener and I compile the draft document in Microsoft Word where I then do my editing. Once the file is in Word, that's where I add in styles for my chapter headings, my text and any normal text and any other types of text that I use. For example, I format my cell phone text in a certain way. But for me, my novel stays in MS Word for the entire editing process. I know that after publication, some people go in and make changes in Vellum. I prefer to keep a master file and then re-import the new file every time I make changes. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So this is the open screen for Vellum. Uh, you have two options to open an existing file. You can see that um, my recent files are here populated on the right, or you can import a Word file, and we're gonna create a new file today. So as soon as I press the import button, it populated into Vellum. You can see all of my chapters are listed here on the left. That was so easy, seriously. I've just imported my book already, folks. Uh, you can see the preview here on the right. This is the um, Kindle Fire uh, version. You can also look at it for each one of these here, the iPhone, for example, much skinnier, and even the print. And we're just gonna keep it on print for a while so you can see how it actually looks um, when it's printed. Let's get started. So we're gonna start with my title page. Enter in the title of my book, Bionic Bug. Subtitle, a mystery novel. My name is Natasha Bajma. And you can, there's an optional um, box here for an ebook ISBN. You don't need ISBNs for ebooks. Amazon will assign you an ASIN. I use ISBNs for my ebooks, um, except for Amazon, um, but I do that on the copyright page. So we'll go ahead and add the ebook cover. that easy. Down here you'll see cover image satisfies size requirements. It's important to pay attention to this. This will affect the quality of your ebook. If your image is too small, you're going to want to go ahead and increase the resolution and then re-import that here. All right, put in my publisher. So I have my own imprint and website. Okay. All right, that's done. So for my print versions, I also have a title page and I go ahead and I, I've created an image for that. Um, so I'm gonna do a full page image. For some reason, they always end up down here. So I'm just gonna bring that right up here, put it right after the first title page and I'm gonna go find that image. And I'm going to switch to a print view again. So this is what it will look like in print um, in the most recent version of Vellum. I'm very excited that they have allowed now bleed. And so I'm going to go in and make these all these changes to my books in KDP so that the title page actually bleeds just like it does in the traditionally published books. So I'm going to go ahead and call this a title page. And then this is only in my print version, so I'm gonna press um, Control and hit the mouse. And then I'm gonna select Print Only. And when that book icon appears, you know that it's only in your print versions. And this little icon here means only in ebook version. This is actually the table of contents. It was automatically populated when I imported my file. Okay, title page is done, let's do copyright. So I do two of these, one for my ebook and one for my print versions because they both have different ISBNs and I'm um, just gonna pull these down here and we'll do the first one as the ebook so include in ebooks only and I'm gonna go get the files need to copy that text All right, there we go. That's the ebook copyright text that I had pre-written. This one is for my print version. 
So we'll go get that. This just saves some time uh, with changing the ISBNs all the time. And sometimes I've forgotten, gotten dinged by Amazon. Um, and then we'll make sure that this one only shows up in my print version. Print only. Okay, all right, copyright is done. Um, it's, let's add the dedication. I don't know why it keeps on doing that. Dedication. Two of my friends who have read every word that I've ever written. Poor, poor friends. All right, dedication is done. So at the beginning of my books, I like to um, have a call to action. And Mark Dawson recommends this in his best practices in his course. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I've created a full page image for this. So I'm just going to go there. It plops down here again. Bring this all the way up here. I'm going to, I call it the uh, VIP Reader Club. And I've created an image for this. All right, um, so essentially this is um, an advertisement for, I'll just make that a little bigger, um, my reader magnets, which come in between each of my three books. And there's a link down here, so if readers are interested, they can go right there. But I'm going to do another call to action at the back of my book with a link. Um, this is just a little preview teaser um, to catch people up front. Okay, so I also wrote a prologue for my book um, after I wrote this novel, so it's not actually in my original novel file, so I'm going to go ahead and add a prologue, and for some reason it populates up here, but I want this on the table, under the table of contents so that it shows up. There we go. There's the text. So here I'm going to do something fun um, to highlight the bionic bug. I'm going to add a heading image. There we go. And just for fun, I'm going to put one in the text as well. Can't have too many beetles. Uh, so insert image. Go choose it. You click on it to make sure the size, because I want it to appear on this first page. There we go. Cool, there's my prologue. Okay, well I am done with my front matter, so you can see how easy that was. Let's go do my back matter. So the first thing you'll find back here is my untitled chapter. This is actually an excerpt from the next novel that I include in my eBooks only to hopefully tempt the reader to go ahead and get my next book. And I put it in my novel draft just to keep with the same format. I didn't want to have to go through all the trouble to format this. All right, so that's all set. But I only want this to be in my ebooks because I need to conserve on pages for the print version. So I'm going to make that an ebook only. Okay, remember I did that call to action up front. I want to follow through on that. So I'm going to add an element afterward. And want more from Lara, who's my main character, and her friends. And I have a text for this. With a link in it already. And I have a nice image as well, so I'm just going to go ahead and add that. So again, this is an ad for my uh, reader magnets that um, they're in between each of the novels. And if they click the link here, they'll be taken to my website where they can sign up to my email list and get exclusive access to these reader magnets and many other fun things. So there's the call to action. Next up is reviews. This is another best practice um, that Mark Dawson talks about in his course. Please review my book. Please, please, please. And then just to bring home the point, I'm going to add a side subtitle. You can make a difference. Seriously. I don't think people understand how important that is. And then I have some text for that that I have pre-written. I 
I'm sorry if you hear that clacking. That would be my dog joining me. So for some reason, Pelham adds all these spaces in here. So I just took out all the paragraphs there. And you can see here, this is the text. Um, this takes them to a link to my website where they can then click on a link and then I'll review it directly on Amazon. Um, it's really important not to have retailers not on, that are not Amazon in your Mobi file. And uh, so this is why I do this. Um, it would be better to have the retailer, but then you have to do individual versions. So that's just too much work for me. So there's reviews. All right, acknowledgements are next. We're almost there. We are almost finished. Can you believe it? And I have text for this. All right, there's acknowledgements. And I actually include an author's note as well. Um, in my ebook version. So I'm going to go ahead and call that an afterword and then author author's note and go get the text. So one of the downsides to using vellum for nonfiction is that it's terrible with footnotes. I have all the footnotes in here in my Microsoft Word version of this and it's just going to strip them all out. Strip them all out. They're gone. All the footnotes are gone. So what I had to do is go in there and add them manually. Um, and it was a real pain and I'm not gonna do that now. Um, that doesn't really count towards my time. Okay, one more about author, add element, about the author. This is where you're gonna put in your bio. And I am not an emerging author of crime westerns and this is not my 17th book. Very, very sad that that is not. That would be awesome, but I have three books. I'm very proud of it. I'm gonna go get my author's bio. Okay, lump that in here. I want this centered. There we go. Down here at the bottom, you see there's um, space for social media links. There are about seven that you can choose from. There's YouTube, um, couple, Amazon page, a couple others, but I'm only going to do three. Uh, go get my Twitter. And I'll go get my Instagram. Okay, there we go. Uh, they will show up as icons there. Um, if you want this in your print book as well, you should select down here, show icons and links. We'll just go ahead and do that. All right, my back matter is done. Oh, I forgot an image. Hold on, let me put my shiny, beautiful image in here. Image, I keep forgetting that. Let's find it, there we go. Okay, there's me, yay. Back matter's done, let's just check. So the epilogue definitely goes in my both versions. Review my book, I only include that in the ebook version because it's link dependent, so ebook only. I include the call to action in my print book, it's only one page, the author's note's pretty extensive, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Ebooks only, acknowledgements and about authors. Looks good, we are done. So I'm going to, um, get to the next step where you press generate. Let's go look at the, oh, it's because I don't have that thing included in print. There's the print preview, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and press generate. I'm gonna continue without saving. You should save it, but this, I already have a bionic bug. So if you click on generate for, you can choose the different platforms um, to save for. I've never used these here. I've used um, Kindle Mobi file. I've used the generic EPUB for all of the other retailers hasn't caused a problem thus far. And here you click on print settings. I've chosen 5.5 by 8.5 for my paperbacks. I do my hardcovers in six by nine. Um, pretty much I stick with all of these things, but here's key. If you um, start with the default settings here on my book, it's gonna take a few seconds to count the pages. So counting. Okay. 436 book, pages in the book. This is this makes a big difference on your bottom line in terms of print costs and royalties. And so when I got a little bit of a sticker shock the first time I loaded up an Amazon KDP, I decided to change the font size. So go ahead and just change it slightly. And I'm going to change the um, line spacing. And that's going to save me on some pages. And it's going to increase my royalty rate. And... Um, 
All right. So 384 pages. That's awesome. So here we are at the end. I'm not going to press generate here because I already have these files, but it is that easy. So thank you for tuning in.